Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to game number two of this best of three between Team Wild Witch Doctors and Top 5. My name is Gorgon the Wonder Cow. You can catch me over on Twitter at GotCowDota. And I'm joined, as always, by Toffees. Hello, hello. It's good to be here tonight. And as always, you can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2 for kicking information and sweet, sweet things. So uh, do that, and that is my plug. All right, so... Top five using the same strategy they used last game. Get rid of one of either the next Sass or Nature's Prophet. Grab the other one and play them. Keep it out of the hands of IX Mike. And it seemed to work out pretty well last time. It did, and I it's it was a, it's a little cheeky this pick almost by top five. Last time, as we know, for those of you who don't know, IX Mike loves Nature's Prophet, he loves Nyx Assassin in the off lane. And top five last time played the Nature's Prophet, banned the Nyx, and this time they reversed the order. So I think that uh maybe they are sending a bit of a message that hey, our off laner can play these characters too. Yeah, absolutely. And not only does that give them a very, very valuable hero, as both those heroes are strong. <laughs> But it really seems to off-kilter Wild Witch Doctors. I, Mike, I've seen him play a strong Bat Rider before. Mm -hmm. But last game, he had a little bit of trouble opening those engagements in strong ways that allowed his team to get the space they needed for those games. Yeah, definitely. And I think his clockwork will probably be a little bit a little better here. Uh, I like the clockwork initiation style. The thing I don't love about Batrider is to execute Batrider, you not only have to be good at initiations, but also at... What's the opposite of an initiation? Getting the F out. <laughs> Not only are you good at initiations, but uh, you really have to be good at, oh, look, there's five of them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm scared. So, yeah. So escape, pa escape pathing takes a lot of practice on the Bat Rider. Clockwork, on the other hand, is just pure initiation and lots of aggression. And that's the characters that IX Mike tends to do really well on when I watch him play. Wild Witch Doctor is picking up that AA, that global ability to help finish off or engage on teams is going to be very valuable with the extremely long range initiation of the clockwork life stealer mid will probably see that storm spear as the puck has been banned out rubik is going to be grabbed by wild witch doctors that gives them a little bit of a defensive play they uh the rubik also very strong against the bane in particular and we're going to see a razor pick up to deal with the life stealer from top five so looking at these teams which of these teams do you think is going to be more active and which do you like the lineup of better well, I think top five is going to be active again. I like the top five lineup. I like Visage and Bane and Nyx together. Uh, their ability to gank can put out a lot of early damage. As a team is pretty on fire, uh, in my opinion. And I think they could really top themselves off with uh, a good, solid mid that's going to be really move-oriented. Somebody perhaps like uh, Storm Spirit, I think, is still on the table. Puck was already taken off. Um, but they would benefit from somebody like that, in my opinion. And so far, yeah. I like that There's lineup. There's Storm, man. So they do ban the storm. They ban the storm against Team Wild Witch Doctor. So I think also needed some significant mobility on their lineup to deal with top five. Um, but I think I'm choosing top five on the lineup alone because I don't love Life Stealer as the hard carry that people seem to love him as. I you, think he has a lot of weaknesses. You came into uh, to the Dota world from the other magical realms from which you scurried in from <laughs> uh a little bit after the life stealer's heyday life stealer mm -hmm. used to be extremely strong and has sort of fallen off i agree he does have a lot of weaknesses i would not really consider life stealer a hard carry i consider him and have always considered him more of a mid-game carry with snowball potential he comes into his own around the same time that a luna would but he does yeah. not carry it the same way that a void or a pl does or a lone druid for that matter and I think there's enough carries and modified carries now, uh, like Ursus, for instance, and Razors and Faceless Voids that can counter Life Stealer very, very well, uh, which is why I get worried when I see him come out as a first pick. Yeah, the first pick on, on the Life Stealer was a little interesting. You normally don't pick your carry either. So we're probably going to see that Silencer in the mid position, Rubik, Ancient Apparition, supporting that Life Stealer, potentially in an aggressive try with the clockwork in the off lane. Most likely a suicide lane though for IX Mike in oh. that aggressive laning position. One, two, three is going to be taking off that that lone druid and he's going to be taking that as a farming carry. And we could see the, mm, we're going to see the Nyx off lane. We'll probably see mm -hmm. a defensive tri lane with the Bane, the Visage and the lone druid. Razor taking the mid. Probably no big surprises coming out of either of these teams in terms of their laning. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, Razor can be a much better choice in the mid matched up against that Silencer uh, than Nyx. Obviously, we know that uh, it's going to... Wait, I'm sorry. We know that Nyx is going to be offlane because of the way they're setting this up. But 
Silencer harassment isn't going to be as effective on Razor because of his ability to have so many spells that he can use to counter it. Um, Silencer, an interesting pickup, though. I like their global presence with this pick. And as we start the festivities with the mandatory early game pause, why don't we go ahead and have you run through Team WWD? Team WWD, who is over on the dire side this time around, we are going to have Pillows playing the hard support Rubik, who does have a dust and some sentry wards up on him right now. IX Mike 88 will be playing the off lane. I'm sorry, the sa that safe lane. That is going to be an off lane solo or a safe lane solo. So Sa it uh, is the off lane, sense. and it looks like they're going to do the aggressive try. So safe lane solo clockwork, and then down in the mid, uh, we are going to have SNA playing with two pulled tangos on that silencer. Oosh will be playing the ancient apparition. And WWD will be playing the Life Stealer, so it looks almost like they're setting up for a two-one-two actually this time around. Yeah, I expect pillows to rotate away from this lane with the Clockwork pretty early though. Uh, yeah, I, would I, that. I, I that could be my foot in my mouth a little bit later. They might two-one-two, but I think he's just coming down for safety, and we'll see him rotate probably in through the mid to try and grab an early gank uh, mm -hmm. on that Razor, and then down to the aggressive try lane. He's also coming up with the Sentry Wards, presumably to maybe try to counter ward this top rune spot. All right, so we do see Don't Worry I'm Here on the Bane for top five. Shanks is going to take that presumably, well, no, that's going to be the aggressive try lane on the Razor with mm -hmm. whatever supporting. I like this lineup, or I like this a lot better than what we'd originally called. Fly, bugging out on that Nyx Assassin, and 1-2-3 is going to be unbearable on the Lone Druid here in the solo safe lane. I like this aggressive try lane a lot. Anytime you can get a Visage Bane into an aggressive try lane, it really behooves you to do it. That Nyx Assassin is going to be a roaming, like an early gank style Nyx in out of the mid, it looks like. I, I really love this potential lineup. It looks like they're going to kind of jumble up here, though. Both teams made some strange rotations after the early reveals from the uh, wards. So a lot of transitions going on. And at one point, both teams had all five mid there uh, yeah. after the clock had started. We are seeing Mad Hatter Dota as both mm -hmm. teams change places. It's... <laughs> I, and okay, Shanks is going to come down. This is going to be... A, okay, th this is turning out into basically what we called. But not quite as 1, 2, 3 is going to be in the off lane. And these are going to be roaming supports now. Sticking by the mid lane. Also roaming supports for WWD. And they are going to go ahead and smoke up and move past this ward up to the top. And I would be surprised if they are unable to grab a first blood on this. Yeah, they waited out in the middle for too long, and their smoke's getting very, very low. So they're going to try to make something happen, uh, oh, but it's not optimal. Yeah. Not able to grab it. So, And that was just good, wise positioning by Fly. He made sure he wasn't out of position uh, when he lost vision on those supports. Yeah, that was very, very nice, especially considering he was kind of relying on that defensive vision, and they were invisible when they walked right by it. And now whatever, and don't worry, I'm here, are going to be here. So it looks like this is going to become... A jungle bear with a two up top, question mark. Top five really having trouble figuring out what they want to do with this Fracken lineup. Really. Yeah, I don't think they, I think they expected more of a lineup style that we talked about at the beginning of the game. And honestly, I think Nyx is going to have some trouble with this silencer down here in the mid lane. So it is worth noting that WWD did end up collapsing into the exact predictable lanes that we had said. That is, once again, not surprising at all. What top five is doing as they play ring around the Rosie up here is confusing me quite a bit but they are losing out on a fair amount of experience because they're doing so okay now they're going to move into the aggressive try lane that they were originally planning on doing one two three is going to take the safe lane down here and they're going to move on wwd immediately life sealer is taking a fair amount of damage stolen and he'll be taking a fair amount of damage from these auto attacks there goes the razor but he waited too long to start doing those auto attacks oh life sealer thought about turning around into that and that could have been very very bad if shanks had reacted into it but Shanks sitting at 112 bonus damage. Not able to move in and grab that first blood, however. Yeah, yeah, he was close. And I think had we seen a little bit of a faster rotation maybe from whatever, that would have been a kill. Yeah, whatever, not quite getting up there. <laughs> Pillows trying to chase whatever out of the jungle. And now we're going to see an engagement here as the AA and the Bane kind of clash forces. There is going to be the open wounds. I'm Don't worry, I'm here. The lift comes up and he is pulled back. The sleep goes out on the Rubik and WWD trying to get away as Team WWD grabs the first kill. Razor, however, is going to be able to grab that last out attack as the Visage moves in. He's going to go and throw out the Soul Something. He's got another Soul Something in one second. He does not need it. Throws out auto attack and Visage grabbing a double kill for the exchange. Life Stealer does not want to let it end that way. He's going to chase out the Razor, but with the salve popped, he's not going to be able to safely move in on that, especially considering the Static Link has now come back online. 
And we're going to see that be a two-for-one trade with WWD grabbing first blood. So a fairly even trade. However, experience-wise, does go the way of top five. So a great play. I also want to point out uh, Radiant with that Sentry Ward. Great idea, knowing there was going to be Vision here. Slightly off the mark, unfortunately. Oh, just so close. Yeah. We're looking. Look at that distance. What, 150 just, units, something like that? I would that? say barely like 100, 150 units tops. Yeah. So smart play. Unfortunately, you know, them's the breaks, kid. They've been getting those breaks all day, too. They, I, I saw several attempts at counter warding in the first game where they were like within that range of their sentry ward of multiple wards you know yeah. just slightly off the mark and wwd is doing a really good job of shifting their wards just a little bit off the standard yeah. placement just to throw top five out of their uh counter warding mojo as it were and the mojo has uh, they've been uh oh and speaking oh. of counter wards there you go this is kind of a dangerous ploy whatever moving in throws down the soul assumption and Oh, this sentry is within the range of their sentry, though, so they're going to get rid of that. Rubik has another, I believe. So, no, nice part of not. that, though. They make him waste the money. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he just threw one down. Oh, yeah. No, no, he doesn't have one. Oh, he threw one down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did just throw one down. Okay. But they did make him waste a sentry, and they were able to recover the price value of the first sentry they threw down. So, uh, still nice for, nice for top five to get that. What else is worth noting about that is, and what makes that counter warding dangerous, is that Team WWD has a ward right on top of where they were dewarding top five. Top five, if they come over to counter ward, they're going to put it right there now. They know exactly where the ward is likely to be, and they know exactly where the sentry is. Rubik is going to disconnect after taking a couple of auto attacks to the face. Looks like some DC problem, and WWD is going to call for the pause as Pillows reconnects. Is that... No, it's just a... It's not all length. That's just his lash. Okay. <laughs> So be like that would be uh, pretty terrible for Shanks having put the link up, just put the link up, and then having the pause after that. So uh, take a quick look at the gold difference. It is nothing substantial. Obviously, we're only five minutes in the game, but it's been pretty up and down. Nobody taking a huge lead. Uh, kills two to one. Pretty standard game so far. Is the aggressive tri lane? I guess is the question. Accomplishing the goal of the aggressive tri lane. I feel like it is. But I feel like it took them too long to decide to move it. They were trying to outguess what WWD was doing. And WWD was being a little tricksy moving their heroes around. But they ended up situating themselves into the most predictable lane. Mm -hmm. And I think Top 5 should have gone with their gut and done this from the get-go. I think that they would have walked away much stronger than yeah. they are walking away now. Because they lost a lot of experience moving around. They lost a lot of potential gold moving around. And they honestly lost a little bit of momentum in this lane doing so. Since they've been up here, they've been doing a really strong job of laying on the pressure, though. And they've got that life sealer down to the same amount of last hits that the mid Nyx is sitting at. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so far, it, it's actually been a very cerebral game, in my opinion, especially up in this top lane. Uh, both teams are trying to outthink the other team and kind of put... I mean, I guess you have to figure out what's the other team going to do and plan accordingly. But they're really kind of going above and beyond trying to outplay the other team on the mental side of the game. Yeah, they are doing what we uh, would typically call meta gaming here. I know meta has a different implication in Dota, but you know, in game theory, meta gaming is when you play the game based on your understanding of how your opponent understands the game. This has hmm. been a very cerebral, as you said, or meta game oriented lineup. And it is worth noting, these are teams that have had the chance to see each other before. Uh, for those of you who are joining us on PlaySevo, you might be familiar with both teams, but they're not uh, they are not the pros. They're pretty popular semi-pros in the scene right now, but they see each other almost <laughs> almost constantly on Thursdays and Sundays. Um, and I would say pretty common that they know each other. So these teams do have a little bit of a leg up, and I think that that's the reason that we're seeing so much meta coming out of them. Uh, in the same way that when you see like Alliance and Na'Vi drafting, they're always really kind of trying to second like one up the other person with those picks because they know each other so well yeah metagame is one of those aspects of dota that is so difficult to really understand changes so frequently and has so many layers that it really takes very strong teams to execute it to their advantage and of course when we go to the highest levels when we're talking about titan orange alliance navi that style of gameplay of course they are fully known for their metagame but here at this level of play we don't see as strong of execution on the metagame aspects from the draft all the way through the the play style through the first two minutes of buzzer and after buzzer but both top five wwd trying to execute as well as they can in this mm -hmm. way 
And I do want to point out that while the uh, top lane, I think, has been going the way of top five for the most part, the mid lane is all day WWD. Uh, that silencer is eclipsing the Knicks on the mid lane last hits and denies. He has 12 denies to the opponent's three and 25 last hits to Knicks' 12. So Knicks really having a hard time getting his purpose up and running on this lane. And by the same token, we know that Clockwork uh, is going to do well with that transition for the Lone Druid down on the bottom. Uh, but he, Lone Druid is keeping up, but I think he's starting to fall off, have a little bit of a hard time staying in, staying in this last hit fight yeah, based on what I've been watching. Uh, Nyx Assassin does not really have a whole ton of spammable spell styles mm -hmm. to deal with this silencer, which is one of the reasons why I didn't really consider the fact that he would go mid. I just kind of wrote it off. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like that was the lineup. He's melee, which means he's got to come within range of the silencer. He's pretty easy for silencer to, to keep down in terms of uh, health pools. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, a Nyx Assassin in the mid doesn't need a whole ton of farm. He right. really just needs to get himself the experience to get the Vendetta. Once he gets that Vendetta up, he can get some of his arm back by moving around and grabbing heroes. So it could go either way still, but the Silencer is going to be forced to reckon with in the mid-late game. He is a pretty strong mid-game carry. Yeah, and I and I think that that's it. Is when we talked about the beginning, I mentioned you know Nyx, he has two spells he can cast, but both are incredibly mana. Uh, intensive so at the end of the day he can either choose to cast a spell and spend the same amount he would have lost from silencer's attack and maybe save himself some health loss he has been bottle crowing uh is also worth noting but he is definitely falling behind in the items uh that he wants to get his hands on for those early ganks yeah getting a little bit of a core item inch up on that hero obviously very very helpful um so speaking of the obvious statement of the day all right we have the Restarting up the PC. Mm -hmm. Ix Mike is throwing that out, so we should be here adding the pause for a couple more minutes. What do you see coming into the mid game out of these lineups? Out of these lines, sorry, I was updating the Twitch stream. Um, out of the mid game, what I am looking to see here is I want top five to start pushing a little more aggression. Um, I think that they have the lineup to start putting some damage on towers around the seven to eight minute mark. Um, I think Razor is one of those heroes that is obviously pretty awesome in that mid to late game, but can come online very early because of his ability to get that static link up and running. So I look to see, uh, don't worry, I'm here, start to land some really nice lockdowns uh, that Shanks can use to execute some good ganks and get that tower down quickly. I think they'll get that mid tower, that top tower down by about seven and a half, eight, and I think they'll then rotate themselves down to the middle to help get Nick's assassin out of the lane and push that one themselves. As far as Team WWD goes, I think what they really need here is to kind of get themselves back in control of uh, these lane situations up on the top. I think SNA is getting to a very good position where he's going to be able to provide that global silence and allow some turnarounds up on the top. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is it's going to come down to the top lane in the next 50, in the next six to eight minutes. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I do think that the silencer is going to need to rotate around to make some space for this life sealer who is falling behind. Life Stealer, if he doesn't get going faster than the Lone Druid, he's not going to have an opportunity to come back. Lone Druid is just able to out harass Life Stealer in the late game. Life Stealer does very well against him in the mid game, however, especially if he has an upward. Oh, there's going to be an immediate lift coming up the Rubik from that tactical pause, but he's going to take some damage. And bottom attacks, the Rubik is going to go down. That is. You, you almost feel bad seeing that kill because mm -hmm. the Rubik did take about 200 damage from his disconnect before the pause went out. Yeah. And uh, it's really a shame. You, I don't necessarily know that that would have gone the same way if the Rubik didn't disconnect. However, he did also have a moment to react with that telekinesis in a way he wouldn't normally. And WWD is just going to have to deal with it moving forward. And, you know, you, you, you do feel bad, but at the end of the day, with $4,000 on the line, uh, can you blame Top 5 for making sure the kill is taken? Oh, no, absolutely. You, you've got to <laughs> take that kill. It's not, I mean, it's not like they refused the pause. As soon as yeah. the pause came out, they, they were very sportsmanlike about it. They had no complaining. But, uh, you know, just the, the Dota gods, the Dota fates, as it were, cutting that string on that Rubik feels, yep. uh, you know, just a, a little bit like, oh, poor WWD, you know. Yeah, and I think part of, I think WWD's had a tough night in some of, I don't want to say the RNGs. Oh, uh, but in a speaking couple of, of which, IX Mike is going to be latched down. He's taking a lot of auto attacks. He will back up, and he does have a cox if he needs it. Go ahead and, and say what you were saying. Well, like this is a good example. Spirit 
Bear crocked his entangle claws at the perfect time there. Um, they've just had a lot of uh, misfortunate luck as far as connects go. Ward's missing by a couple of units. Uh, just that sort of, you know, when things start going wrong, it's hard to pull them back, and it's not your fault. It's just one of those days. Yeah. And, of course, as the late game goes, uh, random number generator skills are a little bit less luck based and a little bit more skill based in terms of being able to get in for them because you attack faster. Down on the bottom right oh, now. Oh wow, we are seeing Ice Mike Hogs and he is gonna grab the kill on whatever as Oosh has come down as well. The bear's gonna go down, that's gonna be 300 gold. Oh, what a deny! Oh, one, two, three, you magnificent bastard! <laughs> Through the trees! I've never seen a bear deny quite like that that was just on the edge of attack range as well what yeah. a play for one two three that's 300 gold he just denied wwd in a big yeah. way yeah that was beautiful and it would have been clockwork who picked that up too which i would have been really bad because clockwork is just hitting that phase where he's going to start to do a lot of frustrating damage here silencer has rotated out he grabbed himself a rune it looks like yeah an illusion rune and he is trying to harass a little bit here in the mid lane make a presence known Presumably, he's going to use that to rotate around, as we do see three heroes up top thinking about making an engagement. Score sitting at 3-2 in favor of top five as they push on this top tower just the way the toppies was saying that he expected them to. Let's see if WWD wants to engage on this as they move forward. Yeah, they're going to have a hard choice. Now, the problem that Top 5 is going to run into here is they don't have the damage output of a typical tower push. So they're going to come in, they're going to get those creeps on it, try to force those catapults into range, and start damaging it. But with the reactions from WWD, they're always close enough to make Top 5 live in fear. Oh, looks like Lone Druid actually just went down to Clockwork. Oh, yeah, the Clockwork coming in, grabbing that kill. There's awesome counter ward to come out of first. Half. Don't worry, it comes in. He throws down the Nightmare on Oosh, but Ice Mike grabs the ward. He goes around the other way. Fly throws out the stun, throws out the Mandarin, and grabs that kill in the A. And now SNA has teleported down. He's trying to get the kill on Fly. Fly taking a couple of auto attacks, but his spike airspace not doing enough. He's already used it, and it completely missed any damage. Ice Mike coming in, trying to get the mini stuns. He's unable to land a single one due to the creeps. He's taking a fair amount of creep damage as Bane also takes a little bit of damage. Fly bottling himself back up as the TP reaction comes in. Out of Syllabare. One, two, three coming back down, and it looks like WWD is going to back out at this time. Up, up on top, top. We are seeing some engagement as Shane's trying to get away from WWD. There's been the reaction as the Bane went down, leaving him alone. He went in a little bit too deep and whatever, unable to cover his tracks. Now down here in the bottom lane, we are seeing Ice Mike going in deep again. Trying to grab Fly, but he's unable to. There's going to be TP action coming out of whatever. Ice Mike trying to get away with the Grave Chill hits, but Ice Mike does have a haste and he's going to bottom himself back up as he walks away scot-free for his very bold attempt. Haste all right. room for the win. I think that's all of our global activity here. Yep. I, I, I don't think I've pinged you so frantically in a very long time. So look that up, was look a bottom, lot. Look top. I feel like I'm playing whack-a-mole. Don't miss a right. kill. And so far, I think we've gotten them all. So great job there. Uh, and uh, great job by WD to make sure that the engagement rolled the way that they wanted it to on the constant. All right. We are going to see another TP reaction coming in bottom. This fly comes in surreptitiously with the vendetta in the jungle. And he's going to move up. He wants to grab this kill on the silencer who's taking this bottom lane. He does not have the survivability to handle this. If he does get entangled down, he will probably die. He's staying a little far forward, but he does seem to have a sense that something's going on. He gets a stun inside of lane with the mana drain, but it is too little too late. SNA, really, really strong map awareness there. He does have IX Mike coming around behind, though. There's going to be the AA ult. It is not... Oh, it is going to land on Fly as the Cogs go out. Catching whatever. The damage going down on Fly. He is going to go down. Whatever. Also taking too much damage. Will go down. What a gank attempt. Ice Mike catching them in. There's going to be the lift as four heroes come down and wreck Shanks. That was next level ganking right there. Perfectly timed, perfectly executed. Cogged them both in, hit them both with the ulti, and then comes Rubik. Oh, Rubik's here to help, but what's inside of Rubik? The Life Stealer. And then you get Life Stealer bombed in the face and ended a three for none. That was, yeah. Next level playing is really the only way to describe that. That clockwork hook shot was, I want to say it was pro, but it was IX Mike, so of course it was. <laughs> it was a pro player. It, it was retired pro. Uh, on hiatus pro i don't know if he's officially out of the scene completely yet so uh on ambiguous highest pro it's it's well, a new level being the amount of appearances wwd has been making more and more of lately i would venture to say that we could probably say not retired now and uh becoming quite a force a lot of people starting to get to know wild witch doctors yeah and of course they are look at the level of play that we're seeing coming out of the scene 
how can you not love a team that can deny like they we just saw Lundra do? Oh my goodness! I'm oh, sorry, no, Lundra is the other team. Five, but hook, yeah, hook shot like Team WWE. Yeah, there you did, go. So. Either both, way, both teams play an extremely fantastic Dota for this game. Yep, both teams exciting to see North American Dota coming along so quickly. All right, there goes the curse of the silent out on Nixas, and he's going to be forced out of lane. Wait till he can bottle himself back up. Not, yep, there's the bottle pop. He's got Vendetta up now, but ooh, very timely, very nice sentry ward mm -hmm. dropped by that AA. Very, very strong map awareness. Me gusta. Yes, very much so. Now, Dyer, <laughs> Dyer has a lot of wards clumped up in this middle area, uh, which tells me I guess that's going to be where they're planning some aggression here. Uh, but they do have access, they do have sight on both accesses to the midpoint. All right, we are going to see Fly moving down. He has been seen. SNA is invisible. Very nice. Oh, for me. That was super close range. And Silencer is going to clean that up with a very long glaive. Yeah, Silencer has a massive glaive. Um, but he combined that with a really... Those short-range ice blasts are freaking hard to land. That was, and, uh, yeah. Apparition's been on fire in his in his. Oh ice blast my today. goodness! Look at this play down here. Ice Mike trying to get a hook shot, but still a bit microing his bear, making it impossible for the hook shot to go out. However, what? Oh, Bane did not know there was WWD was inside of that IX Mike, and Bane turned around thinking, "Oh, I can one-on-one -on -one this guy with my ultimate. Have one, two, three come up," and a little too confident, Life Stealer jumped out. And Bane giving up a kill that he really didn't have to. Yeah, and importantly, the the real winner there is the Life Stealer's patience. Had Life Stealer come out on the initial start, uh, Bane I think would have had enough time to get himself away. But it was the reinitiation attempt by Bane, and then Life Stealer showing himself that really made it work. Yeah, Life Stealer spent the whole time just going, "Get the hook shot! What are you doing? Just hook shot him!" And the bears just zigzagging around. All right, Fly is just sitting right outside tower range. He's actually inside tower range right now, I think. WWD should know what's going on. He does not seem to, though, and he is probably going to go down here. Yeah, he's going to be nightmared, and Shanks is going to catch up with a full 98 damage stolen and one, two auto attacks. Oh, another nightmare going out as the Rubik has stolen it, it looks like. Nope, it was the Bane. I don't know why Bane threw out that nightmare. But either way, Life Zero goes down, and that's all she wrote. I moved down here into the jungle, missed a little bit of that in the top. So it looks like there's going to be a counter engagement. Next assassin yeah. is following Oosh through the river, though. And I hope he doesn't follow too much farther because he's going to run into some serious oh. trouble. Invis rune on the Nexus assassin. He's going to walk himself away. No, but they did. They threw that nightmare up on Life Stealer, and then they just sort of sat around and waited for it. Uh, and there was no trans transition up from WWD to help save him. So literally, Razor just sat there for a good three seconds and then just hit him one more time. Yeah, well, to be fair, it was two more times. Don't, don't, come on. Fair, fair oh. enough. I will, do want to point out that uh, right now Silencer is sitting on top of eight oh, dear. stacks of stolen intelligence. What? Uh, what? Continued tremendous play. Coming out of one, two, three, making sure everything is blocked. Life Stealer is inside the IX Mike, and they're going to get cogs within the tower and turn around. Now, the shoe's on the other foot as the prey becomes the predator. Shakes turning around as the AO has evaporated. The stolen bear from Rubik is being nuked down. Let's see, Rubik trying to micro that bear. It is outside of attack range to Az. As the taking a lot of damage, he is going to go after the Razor. The ultimate is out. And a very nice brain tap coming out of the Bane is going to secure that kill. The bear going down as well. The AA ult trying to cover a retreat. And everybody moving into it. Wow. That, that hit a solid chunk of top five who just kind of wandered into it. But Dang. they are going to grab themselves the first tier one tower of the day. No, the one tier one mid actually did drop that I did not catch. So their first tier one tower, but not the first tier one tower of the game. Yeah, it's a uh, it, strong re reignition uh, entering that fight. Oh, and we're going to see another while. one as there's some TP reactions. Life's really spray something. He's trying to move on one, two, three. What a call! He's interrupting that. TP. The Nightmare goes out to save one, two, three for a second, but he is going to go down on the backside of the fight as IX Mike is trying to get. Don't worry, I'm here. He's waiting for the Gogs to come back up. He's throwing out those mini stuffs. He's going to walk right through the tower, throwing out that missile. And now the Lifestar is here as well. There is no open wounds for a second. There's going to be a hook shot and a couple more objects. Bane throwing out the ult, trying to do anything. But he is going to go down. That seemed like a bit of a waste of the ult. There was no way he was getting out of that. There's going to be Nick's another TP reaction. Everything. As Pillow is being brought down by Fly and Shanks comes in. He is going to be mecked up. He has his ultimate up. He is not casting it because of the mini stuns. He's got. No, he's not dealing enough damage. He is 
done a little bit to Ice Mike, but not Ice Mike down to about half health. Not able to. Hey, hey, throwing down a very, very long ultimate just in case anybody tried to move into those woods for cover. A nice predictive factor, but nobody survived long enough to really move that far. And WWD is going to back out now. That was a pretty yeah. nice re-engagement by that team. Yeah, WWD lost that tower, and I thought that top five had really come out way ahead. And then the re-engagement, they just... Team WWD showed them why they are here today. And uh, they're going to get a tower exchange and came out with some pretty good kills in that fight. A Nightmare goes down on Ice Mike. SNA sending a one last out attack. Vayne denies the tower. And WWD is going to teleport away with the Rage. Fly trying to move out onto SNA. SNA is moving away as well. They are sitting on similar moves. He's Ice Mike drops down the defensive cogs, but he has just moved in. Fly just walks around it. He's within range of the stun. If he can grab it, he throws up. The spike here space to get rid of the silence. There's going to be the brain sap followed by the grave chill SNA. Meanwhile, Nixon has to go down from the back end. And don't worry, I'm here taking a lot of damage. He's going to nightmare himself for the deny. He's within the cogs, but silencer takes the nightmare away. And WWD moves in for that kill, whatever, trying to get away. And will he be able to? He is going to be able to teleport away. What a series of great plays from both teams. The self-deny nightmare within the cogs. The lift by the silencer. Oh my goodness, this is a game of plays. Yeah, I don't even... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, that was just, it's been back and forth. It's been a phenomenal game to watch so far. I will say that in your excitement, I think that you're topping out just a little bit on your mic. So we're losing some of the back end of your words. Just as it a heads is, up on that one. It is too exciting to not yell. I'm so sorry. Exciting. I'm sorry for my neighbors and I'm sorry for my microphone. Yeah, I actually see my preamp is, uh, is peaking a little bit. So I will turn that down just a hair. But that said, sure it that has been good. WWD, uh, that TP after the tower, I think the play that maybe top five should have made two minutes prior. All right, we are going to move over, take a look at our net worth for heroes. Uh, Lone Druid almost keeping up with the life series, about 800 behind, which is notable, but not staggering. Gold earned about 2,000 in favor of WWD. Once again, notable, not staggering. Experience, about 4,000. Not bad either, but neither team really seems to be taking a really strong lead as Shanks does move around behind SNA. SNA throws out the global side, but Vendetta was already up. He is, oh, what an entangle as the clockwork lights you about. Three games, there's a very nice clockwork. Hogs. Shanks going to go down to WWD as whatever is facing away. The AL hits everybody. Fly might be going down here as well, just to the AL as the auto attacks take down the Visage. The bear is going to be teleported away and the. Uh, Nixon has to will go down to the Rubik, as that is a four for none trade. Yeah, Team WWD coming online here and doing what they came to do. So they are starting to execute their push. They are starting to make it work, and uh, it is brutal when they're catching these top fives. Yeah, top five still hasn't quite got in the memo that when you see Ice Mike, you see Life Stealer. You're not seeing one without the other, basically for any of these engagements. They are the Burton Ernie of Dota right now. Ha. Oh boy. We are so, potentially seeing another re engagement here. As there have yeah, been some TP reactions since tier two. All tier ones are now down uh, from that Team WWD push. So remember, I th I, we thought we would see top five push a little harder than they did. They were never able to get that top tower. I want to say that. WWD came back, won the top tower fight, and then immediately transitioned and won that battle on the bottom lane. And that gave them the momentum they needed to make this their match. I've been watching the Spirit Bear all match on and off just to make sure that the Radiance hasn't gone up. That's going to be a big item against a hero like AA, who is so easy to just kind of whittle down. And also in terms of getting his farm back up ahead of the Life Stealer. That's really top five's next course of action. Get that still spirit bear it's to the point that life Stealer can't one on one him. That's yeah. the, that's going to be the stage in the game where they really start to come back. They're sitting at half the kills as WWD. Also starting to fall behind in terms of push, so they're starting to rely a little bit more heavily on their late game potentials. AA is going to throw up the goal, and that's the clue that there's going to be an engagement up here. SNA jumping out from the side. He is going to go throw down the stun, and there's going to be the self nightmare for. Don't worry, but it is not going to be enough. He's going to go to wand himself up. Trying to make sure, as there is going to be the invisible initiation coming out of the room, and there's the jump pieces. Very, very nice. Into the cogs, Ice Mike may be able to grab both of those with the fade bolt coming out of the room, grabbing a double kill. Wow. So, once again, WWD exerts their push, makes it work, and is just put, exerting their will all over Top 5's face right now.
They are opening up space for the Lone Druid, though. You've got to give them that. And that Spirit Bear is going to be sitting on top of that Radiance fairly soon. All right. Up here on the top lane, we see some pretty aggressive warding coming out really all over the place from WWD. They don't want to let up on the action. They have such a gank-oriented team that they want to continue to dominate in terms of kills, and that's where their towers are supposed to come from. Dyer's Courier are getting sniped out by Nyx Assassin. That's a pretty nice play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, taking that career down is strong. Bane just picked up two smokes, worth noting. So top five knows that they need to do something to get themselves back into this. They need to set up a pickoff or two. The problem is that WWD has started to work that global presence that they have built in. The fact that we have an invest potential anywhere. The fact that Clockwork can move so quickly. The fact that Ancient Apparition can damage from anywhere on the map. And the Silence global representation is just making them so hard for them to deal with, especially with Gang right now. Alright, WWD moving into the Roshan pit where Radiant has no vision. Um, they're gonna get a free Roshan, no reaction coming out here. And they're probably gonna engage immediately on the heels of this. In addition, uh, we did see the Rod of Eidos up on the Silencer in the last night. Oh wow, the Bear scouting it out. It actually does have the Radiant something now finds it. But there's nothing they're gonna be able to do about this. Bear is gonna go ahead and move in again. Try to, actually Ice Mike is trying to work with this. Buying enough time, potentially. He's going to chase Ice Mike out. WWD is going to grab that Aegis. But Ice Mike taking a lot of damage from this bear. He's trying to go ahead and do the juke. The micro, hard to do while you're on the other side of the map. Ice Mike is going to get away, and the bear's going to feed him 300 on top of the Aegis. Meanwhile, down here, we are going to see the engagement by Shakes, who's going to try to move away. He's going to have to move straight through the A-Ulti, though. He's right in the middle of it. He's going to move in with the static field. Probably not the call they want to make. They should back out right now. Yeah, get out while you can. Oh dear, Fly coming in very deep, trying to get somebody on the heels of that. And WWD is fairly low on this, and they did actually grab the life sealer there. I did not catch that. Yeah, they did, and they also are in that. It's is a strong mid push coming out of top five. I think this is good for them. Take this tier two. Uh, it'll be the first tier two of the game, and it's going to really slow down Team WD, WD's ability to move around the map without top five tracking them, which has been their biggest benefit in this game so far. Oh, what a downtown hook from Ice Mike. He grabs two. KO going up as well. Ice Mike has been sent out by the Nick Assassin, and Telkinesis lifts whatever out. Science are Shank's not going to make it. Ice Mike is going to make it out. As the Soul Sentry goes out on the bear, there's going to be one last auto attack, and, or one last glaive of wisdom, excuse me. That's going to give another 300, and that is the last recall for that bear for a while. Nick Assassin is going to barely get away here, as the Razor is unable to. That's so, a uh, two for nil trade? Yeah. Plus the and bear? And once again, that was entirely based on the global presence of Team WWD. Razor went down because of the silence combined with the Ancient Apparitions ulti. Those two things just negated his ability to be in that fight that he was trying to engage on in the first place. All right. We are seeing this push coming out of WWD. They're trying to make something out of this engagement orient themselves a little bit more around some objective-based Dota now that they've got a 12 kill lead. But they are getting a little bit distracted here as they're trying to chase down Fly who has his Blink Dagger up. Some other items that have gone up recently will be the armlet on the life suit. It's been up for about, I want to say, eight minutes. Oh! Ice Mike down that once again! The AA is going to be able to land that nice ice ball. Chilling, chilling touch goes out as well. And that is going to be a dead Nyx Assassin. What a gank. This parade of death. Oh, and they're not done. Science mm -hmm. has that Invis rune with the life sealer hidden inside, and they're looking for some snipe kills here. <laughs> Pillows. Rubik trying to bait. Oh boy, whatever is going to be tough to be stopped as the smoke goes down and Shake Shake pops as well. Whatever is going to take up a lot of the nice mechanism, trying to get both back in shape but not able to. The auto attacks are going to take them down the wand, helping Bane get back up. He's going to be chasing them all the way to the base of the Pillows. He's going to try to gank, but the silencer. Able to grab a lot of damage with those glaives and the box of revenue with the mini. So now the bear is being attacked down. He's got a lot of wealth on him. He's not going to be able to do for a while. Every summon, 90 seconds before another bear is going to come up. This is going to be a free tower, maybe a free tier three. Without yeah. that bear, without all that wealth, they're going to have a lot of trouble handling this push. I think top five is starting to lose. Well, they, they lost. They started to lose this control of the game. If you go back uh, and take a look at that 18 minute mark on the gold XP graph, you can literally see where the drop starts and doesn't stop. All right. We are seeing Fly move in on pillows. Oh, he turned around because he thought he had the kill, but Shanks coming up and securing that. 
So nice play by Shanks. Rubik caught. Rubik's been very aggressive with his positioning for this game. Uh, no oh, stun, so SNA should be able to get out of here. Yeah. Oh, there was a stun actually. It just pulled down, but a millisecond too late. Well, I was counting milliseconds when I said no stun. I knew that's not true. So a uh, great play so far. Uh, top five to get back into this. Yeah, they need to get that farm on the lone druid. They, they, man, I don't know. What, what, what do they do to keep themselves in this game? Just get lone druid farm. He can go out and send that bear out pretty safely. In 18 seconds, he can farm globally with the bear. It's got the radiance. Play it safe. Don't let WWD Rax you. The Aegis is already up on Silencer, so you've got to mm -hmm. wait it out anyway. Just make sure your Lone Druid is getting the farm he needs. Try to get that Razor back up in the shape as well. Don't get caught out. Play Buddy System Dota and have an eye out for Ice Mike. Very defensive warding needs to go up as well. Something around here, something around here. Maybe one Jungle Ward and also something maybe over here. Make sure that you have vision. Make sure that you are opening up the map. And that is really all they can do. And we do see the Ancient Apparition went for that November-style support. He has gotten for the Midas. And he will have his Agandams up very soon. Yep. Oh, and it's I worth noting Silence. Silencer, after that last fight, also picked up his eggs. And WWE picked up his AC. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of dead towers. They... Dot 5 probably not able to defend this bottom tier 2. They're assembling... They're moving down towards it. I don't know if this is engagement that they want. Yeah, they don't have vision on the rest of WWD, so engaging here is going to be very difficult for them. AA scouting out with the Ice Flash. Oh! And Ice Flash is able to grab it on whatever right away. And the wow. Ruby is going to that with a Fade Bolt. The auto attacks coming out from WWD. And the Silver is going to go down as well. A couple pieces up on Shanks. Shanks has been pulled back. And he goes down. That engagement was <laughs> epic. <laughs> yeah. There's the GG. And Oosh have been telekinetically linked. They are controlling each other's heroes, I'm positive. There's no yeah. way. Like, their, their coordination goes beyond telepathic. It is and, literally like they are moving fluidly like two arms on a body. And, they're, and you know, they're giving, and the thing is, Lifestealer, they're setting him up to get these really amazing kills because of the team style initiation. So, great play by WWD, and that takes us to a match three. All right, well, we are going to go to the lobby for match number three between Top 5 and WWD. Both these teams really showing their stripes, both undefeated so far in the Sevo Season 4. My name is Gorgon the Wonder Cow. You can catch my casting updates, my analysis updates, and my general musings over at Twitter at GotCowDota, G-O-T-C-O-W-D-O-T-A. And, of course, please do follow my friend Toffees. Toffees, where can they find you? You can find me over on Twitter at Toffees underscore Dota 2. Uh, so head over there, hit the follow button. It helps me out so much. So if you like the cast, do it. If you don't like the cast, you should do it anyway. So you can send me all kinds of fun tells. Uh, that said, we're going to bring you an awesome game. And I will leave off with one note for Gorgon before we go on the mute. Is that it sounds like Twitch chat is saying that your mic adjustment seems to be on. So when we're getting into action, uh, your computer's muting you a little bit. Huh. We can, uh, we'll can. we work on that and get it fixed up for the next game. All right. Well, we will be looking at that. And also, everybody in the stream, please do consider picking up a Dota 2 ticket for Dota TV, where you can also grab yourself some swag items out of these games. And also, please do hit the follow button on twitch.tv slash one.